Um, you owned a, a ton of domain names, right? Yeah, I bought a bunch. Like, h- how many do you own now? Or how many well, have I you mean, owned? I, I won't count all the, I mean, I own hundreds and hundreds, but the ones that are, are top level primary domain names, about 16. Like, uh, like words in the English language that everybody understands. Like, I own Emma, uh, Frank. I own my own name. I own Michael.com. I also own my nickname, Mike.com. Uh, so like my personal website, I've, I've got it on Michael.com. You just type Michael.com. You see all the stuff about me. Uh, hope. Yeah, Sam, go, go to hope.com. See where that takes you. Go to hope.com. <laughs> yeah, well, actually Bitcoin is hope. So if you type hope.com, you'll get everything there is to know about Bitcoin. <laughs> oh my Cause, I, Cause I actually repath hope to all of our Bitcoin resources and materials. Uh, so speaker. I, I owned voice.com and I sold it for $30 million a couple of years ago. That's the largest uh, naked domain sale in the history of domains. Tell, tell the, Who tell the short it? version of that story. The, the story is kind of crazy. I've heard it once before, but I, I would assume Sam and mo- most people have not heard the story of selling voice.com. Mm-hmm. You bought all these early on in the web. You kind of recognized, oh, these are, these are probably going to be valuable to own these names. There's only one. You know, there's only one owner of each of these names. You, you own it and you hold it for a really long time, like over a decade. And uh, at some point you decide, okay, maybe we should see if somebody wants to buy some of these. So tell the story of selling voice.com real quick. Well, yeah, we, I bought all these domains because I thought, wouldn't it be great to own a part of the English language? I mean, owning hope or own, owning voice. I mean, eventually there'll be a Google voice or there'll be, you know, some, some telco company that'll want to launch some service and what a great domain on, uh, to launch on, the, on a word like voice.com. So we held them a long time. And, and uh, I think at some point we were looking for joint ventures. We were looking to commercialize them. And we did commercialize a bunch. For example, I created a company called alarm.com. And alarm.com is now publicly traded on NASDAQ. It's like four or $5 billion market cap company. And, and you can guess what it does. It actually integrates your home alarm into the internet, you know? And I created another company called angel.com and we sold that for a bit more than a hundred million dollars. And that was actually a speech a- interactive voice response like Surrey or Alexa before Surrey and Alexa came along. And uh, so I had voice and I was holding it and we were looking for some kind of good uh, commercialization and someone out of the blue they contacted us, uh, one of the domain brokers, and they said, well, you know, do you want to sell it? We'll give you 150000 And uh, And, I, you know, I was like, uh, someone came to me and said, they offered 150000 I said, no. So I thought nothing of it because I just, I couldn't see the point. A week later, they come back and said, well, they doubled it to 300000 I said, tell them no. So... A couple of days later, they go, well, the broker's really insistent. Uh, and so they went to 600000 I said, no. So they said, well, what should you say? I said, don't tell anything. Tell them, you know, <laughs> like we're not interested. It's got to be something serious. So they, they went to $1.2 I said, tell them no. I said, well, they want to know what you want for it. I said, um, well, uh, send him a note or something and just tell him, I said, it's like, it's, it's the word voice in the English language, right? So it's going to have to be something, you know, north of, uh, I don't know. I don't think I said seven or eight, eight figures, but I just said a lot of money. Um, and so it went on and they doubled again to two and a half million. And then, uh, and then, uh, 5 million and then around 10 million. Then I said, they said I had like 18 people in my office. They're like, or not eight, but eight, eight people. They're like looking at me like, aren't you, are you going to take the money? It's like a lot of money now. I said, uh, no, send them back. Uh, at this point, send them back an, a note pointing out that this is like the word voice in the English language. And it's, and it's, it's worth a billion dollars to the right company. And uh, they said, well, are you going to give them a response? I said, uh, okay, tell them 30 million. Tell them I'll take 30 million for it. 
because I thought like if I didn't give them some number, they would stop negotiating after a, you know five no's. So I said, tell them thirty million. I don't want to sell it for thirty million. I want to sell it for a hundred million or more. But I guess I'll say thirty million. So that so at that point they said, well, you know, they offered you. I think they upped their their offer to like um, twelve million. I said, tell them uh, no. But if you want, I'll I'll take a meeting with them. So when it got to twelve million, I said I'd get on the phone for half an hour. So then we got on the phone, and the call started with someone saying, "Well, how about twenty-two million?" And I said, um, "Let me explain. This is like my daughter. Like I'm willing to I'm willing to like marry her off, but only to a man that values her more than I value her." So I value this domain, you know, at 30 million. <laughs> and so if you don't want to give me the 30, you know, I'm going to regret after I sell it anyway. I'll have seller's remorse, but I would, I would do it just to make the market. But if you don't want to value it at 30, I'll just keep it. And they're like, uh, okay, we'll give you 30. I said, okay. <laughs> So thirty, well, you went, you got a thirty from a hundred k. So they did like double seven or eight times, and I eventually, <laughs> they started one hundred fifty k, I think, and we ended it. And I said thirty, we ended it thirty. But but the point was, I didn't really need the money. It was a matter like if I had at the point maybe six hundred million in cash in the bank, and the company, the micro strategy was is a multi billion dollar company, so. I was like, a million is not going to move the needle for me. A hundred thousand is not going to move the needle for me. Five, ten million is not going to move the needle one way or the other. So there's no point in doing it unless it was something material. Were you all, like, you know, the eight people in your office were were they like your coworkers or? Uh, I mean, well, it's business development. The people that wanted the commission on the deal, you know. So Space like people. any any. Most it's like it's a big every... deal, right? They want to like do the deal, and and the only way you get thirty million is to like say no to twenty two million, right? And well, like else. any reasonable, most reasonable people, which the reason you are where you are is you're many would probably consider you not reasonable, right? I mean, you have you're 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 an extreme personality type, and that's why you, you're very successful. But any reasonable person would say, "What are you, an idiot? Like you paid uh, very, nothing for this. Take it." Were you? But were you always that? Like uh, my, my always... view on it is that the English language is going to be important to the human race for a thousand years, and in a thousand years from now, voice will probably still have value, just like a lot of like hope. It's a valuable word forever. I mean, until you murder everyone that speaks the English language, if you think about how valuable it is, my my real view is is I think people are are crazy for spending hundreds of millions of dollars on ad campaigns to market a brand that's a misspelling of a normal word. It's like, I got to convince you how to sell ingentian stuff <laughs> with like two Y's and a Z, you know? And I'm like, why would you do that? Because in the modern era of spell checkers, when you try to type these crappy brands that are misspelled, you know, your iPhone unspells it for you or properly spells it. So try going to a website that's a misspelling of a name. Most brands and most brand consultants, I just disagree with them all. They, you know, they charge you a lot of money to come up with a misspelling of a common word. And then you spend half a billion dollars marketing the brand. A much better idea would be Buy the word hope or angel or alarm or alert or or voice. Even if you got to pay a hundred million or two hundred million or five hundred million dollars, because if I see your your ad and you tell me that you know your brand is alert.com, I can remember it in one second. I can spell it in one second. You leap immediately to the top of the Google search engine. So I just I, I always view domains as being undervalued, and then mark. People spend hundreds of millions of dollars of going crappy marketing to send someone to a place they can't spell, that they can't remember. I think the world will gradually come around to that point of view, but they're not there yet. But that, So that was my view. Like, I didn't want to sell it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> like, if you owned the word, 
angel or the word alarm or the word hope or voice. Like the truth is Google should have paid a billion dollars for the word voice. I mean, if they're going to try to launch a voice service, it's worth it to them. And eventually, you know, what you're going to see is Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google are just going to keep generating more money. But the word voice or the word hope or, the, you know, fill in the blank, any kind of positive, uh, positive, easy to spell short word in the English language is going to be an awesome place to build a brand. And so right now it looks like you own strat uh, or you owned or or you I currently own strategy. Own, or you, I own yeah, so strategy, wisdom.com, alarm.com, angel.com, AA alert, courage, mike.com, voice.com, usher.com, hope, speaker.com, Michael, Mike, sailor.org. So you own a bunch of them. Yeah. And so and so my view is like like trying to sell the I, I got 20 Picassos and I wanted the world of market to value Picassos. So I sell the first one for 30 million, but the next one I want a hundred million for, or I, or I really want, you know, someone to create a, a billion dollar business with me on that. Right. That's the right way to think of it. And I mean, I, I, look at it this way. How many people have learned that have learned to speak English on earth? What is that number? 2 billion maybe? How many how many years of your life do you learn do you spend learning English? I mean, a typical person spends takes English ten years, like from kindergarten through twelve, maybe twelve years. But let's say that we shorten it. Two billion people spend four years of their life, and that's eight billion years of time spent figuring out how to spell and type your brand. What's the if you value the eight billion years at twenty dollars an hour, that's one hundred and sixty billion dollars worth of money spent teaching people that hope is a good thing, <laughs> right? What's it worth? Like, what's it worth? Like, to have a brand which is universally understood and easy to spell that's burned in the head of billions of people. You know, you couldn't have, you're going to go and buy advertising to convince them that H O O P E is a good thing, Hopi, or so, like, not really. So I, I think that um, they're just good investments. They're scarce real estate and cyberspace, and they'll always be good. And the world undervalues them. But in time, like when I tell you alarm.com, you can remember alarm, you can go type alarm. When you get off this podcast, anybody that wants to go check out what alarm.com does, they don't have to go and like look it up and sort through 197,000 Google search pages to figure out which one is the one that Sailor was talking about. Yep. My friend uh, started calm, calm.com, the meditation app. And uh, the, the first thing he did was just get the domain basically. And uh, he decided early on, all right, I'm going to build a brand around the feeling of being calm. And it took the form of a meditation app, but he sort of decided up front what it was going to be and ha got that domain and really like had to negotiate to get it. And it was, you know, these domain negotiations go prolonged, but, but definitely another, uh, I don't know, success story of that, that path. And I'll remember it too, by the way, like, like what you just said, you just pitched me on an idea. I'll get off and if some, off this podcast and if four weeks from now, someone asks you, so what was that meditation business thing? I'll be like, C A L M dot com. Right. Hopefully they got the right spelling of it, right? Yeah. No, there's three L's. No, I'm just joking. It's the it's the right one. Um, yeah. all right. So let's let's talk it about works. let's talk about something else.